Hello everybody, today we are going to solve this physics question here, and I think this is a pretty good question, maybe this is something you'd see on a test. So the question is, at the instant when the traffic light turns green, an automobile starts with a constant acceleration of 1.8 meters per second squared. At the same instant, a truck traveling with a constant speed of 8.5 meters per second overtakes and passes the automobile. Question A. How far beyond this starting point will the automobile overtake the truck? Question B. How fast will the car be traveling at that instant? So let's quickly draw what's happening over here. So we have a car here that is waiting at an intersection here. Right now this car is stopped, the traffic light is red, and at this moment right now the traffic light turns green and this car is going to start accelerating immediately. So right now its initial speed is zero and it's going to be gaining speed at a rate of 1.8 meters per second squared. And there's also a truck here at this exact same moment and this truck has actually been moving up to this intersection at a constant speed of 8.5 meters per second. And this truck is going to keep going 8.5 meters per second indefinitely for now. So this car is moving, it starts at a speed of zero, but the truck has some initial speed. So after one second, maybe it'll look something like this. Maybe this car will be here and the truck will be here and then after two seconds, maybe this car will be here and this truck will be here. But eventually, what will happen at some point, they will be at the exact same point again. The, the car will catch up to the truck again. So what we're being asked for in this question is at what distance will this happen? Will this car catch up to the truck again? And the second question is, how fast will the car be traveling? Because the car is constantly gaining speed, whereas the truck is, at, is moving at a constant speed of 8.5 meters per second. So these are the two things that we're solving for. So let's write down what we do know and what we don't know. So there will be information for the car and for the truck. So we have an initial velocity for the car. There will be a final velocity of the car. There will be some distance that the car travels. There will be an acceleration of the car and the amount of time that the car travels. And for the truck, we'll have all of the same variables. We'll have the initial speed of the truck. We'll have the truck's final speed. We'll have the distance that the truck travels, the acceleration of the truck, and the time that the truck travels. So let's see which of these we do know and which of these we don't know. So the initial velocity of the car. How fast is the car moving right at the beginning when it is at the, when it is at the intersection? How fast is the car moving? The car is moving at zero meters per second because it says an automobile starts. So it was not moving before this instant. Okay, how about the final velocity of the car? Do we know what this is? Right now, we don't know what this is, and this is what question B is asking. How fast will the car be traveling at that instant? Okay, next, how far does the car travel when it catches up to the truck. What is that distance? That we don't know again, and that is what question A is asking. So this is another thing that we don't know. Okay, how about the acceleration of the car? Do we know the change in velocity divided by time of the car? Well, we do know that. It, it gives us that in the question. It says, with a constant acceleration of 1.8 meters per second squared. So the velocity for the car is 1.8 meters per second squared. And how about how long it takes for the car to catch up to the truck? That we don't know. That isn't given to us. That's something that we can find out. So 
Let's just call that t for now because that's something that's unknown. Okay, now let's take a look at these values for the truck. So do we know how fast the truck is traveling at first? Well, we do know it's 8.5 meters per second. Okay, and what about the truck's final speed? Do we know what that is? Well, yeah, that will also be 8.5 meters per second because it says the truck is traveling with a constant speed and we're not told that there's any acceleration or any change in speed so the truck's final velocity will also be 8.5 meters per second okay how about the distance that the truck travels do we know what that is again we don't know what that is but that's going to be the same as this xc here because when they're both the same distance away from each other, then, then these values will be equal. So let's call this one x, and we could also call this one here x. Okay, how about the acceleration of the truck? If something's traveling at constant speed, then the acceleration is going to be zero. Zero meters per second squared, because acceleration is just the difference in velocity divided by time. So if the dis difference in velocity is zero, that's going to be zero divided by time, so that's just going to be zero. And how about this? How long will the truck be traveling until the moment that the car overpasses it? This is exactly the same as this time here, so we could label this one also as t. With these kinds of questions, there are two equations that I'm hoping you do know, and if you don't, then I'll just show you them right now. We know that average velocity times time is equal to distance. That is our first equation that we know, and average velocity is obviously just initial velocity plus final velocity divided by two. So we have this is average velocity times time is equal to distance. So here's our first equation that we have. And the second equation that we know is acceleration is equal to the change in velocity divided by time. So that's final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. So we'll try to solve this question here using these equations here. So let's see what we don't know. Let's see how many unknowns we have. So we don't know the final velocity of the car, so that's one unknown. We don't know what x is, and both of these are the same x. So now we have two unknowns. We have initial velocity of the car, the distance is unknown, and also the time is unknown. So that gives us three unknowns. So we have three unknowns, but only two equations. So how do we go about solving this? Let's see. So here's what we'll do. Let's use this equation here. Average velocity times time is equal to distance. Let's write this equation for both the car and for the truck. So for the car, this is going to be equal to x Whoops. This is going to be equal to x for the car, which is just x. So we could just write it as x car for now. Is equal to the average velocity that the car travels, which is the initial velocity plus the final velocity divided by 2 times the time that the car travels. And this time is just t. For the truck, this is going to be equal to the average velocity that the truck travels, which is the initial truck velocity plus the final truck velocity divided by two times the time that the truck travels. And since xc is equal to xt because they're both equal to x, we can set these equations equal to each other, and let's see if that helps us out at all. So then we have the initial velocity of the car plus the final velocity of the car divided by two times time, and that is equal to the initial velocity of the truck plus the final velocity 
of the truck divided by two times time. So now let's take a look at how many unknowns we have here. Time is unknown and the final velocity of the car is unknown. But look, but we have this T on both sides here. So these T's just cancel out. And now we only have one unknown in this equation. So the one unknown that we have is the car's final velocity. So let's solve for that right now. So the final velocity of the car is equal to, we'll bring that two up there. So we have two times initial truck velocity plus final truck velocity divided by two. And we're going to subtract the initial car velocity from that. So now we can just plug in the numbers and solve for what the final car velocity is. So we just have that the final car's velocity is equal to the initial truck velocity, 8.5 meters per second, plus uh, the final truck velocity is 8.5 meters per second because it's not changing speed, minus what's the initial car velocity? Zero. So the car's final velocity is just 17 meters per second. So this actually solves one of the questions that we were asked for. We were asked, how fast will the car be traveling at that instant? So that is the answer to part B. This is how fast the car will be traveling. So now that we know how fast the car will be traveling, uh, we could easily find out what this distance is. So remember, we can use this equation over here to quickly solve for time. And then once we'll have time, we could just plug in time in here and then we'll get what the distance traveled is. So we solved for how quickly the car will be traveling once it catches up to the truck. So let's see how far the car travels in this distance. So we know this equation from earlier. Remember that we know acceleration is equal to the change in speed divided by time. So now, if we're taking a look at this for the car, what do we know and what do we not know? We know the acceleration of the car, we know the final speed of the car, and we know the initial speed of the car, we just don't know the time. So let's save, or let's isolate for time. So time is equal to the final velocity of the car minus the initial velocity of the car divided by acceleration. So time is going to be equal to, we know final velocity of the car is 17 meters per second minus initial velocity is zero meters per second divided by acceleration, which was given in the question as 1.8 meters per second squared. So let's enter that here, 1.8 meters per second squared. And the units here, the meters per second cancels out with meters per second, and then you end up having just seconds at the top. So the time ends up being 9.44 seconds. So we're going to use this value of time to see how far the car has traveled before it catches up to the truck. So we can go back to this first equation here that I was saying I hope that we should know, and that is average velocity times time is equal to distance. So now for the car, we'll know all of that. So we know average velocity times time is equal to distance. So let's look at that again for the car. So average velocity is equal to the initial velocity of the car plus the final velocity of the car divided by two, multiplied by time is equal to the distance. So we know everything here except for the distance. So let's solve for the distance. So what's the initial velocity of the car? Zero meters per second, plus the final velocity of the car. We solved that to be 17 meters per second. all of that divided by two. And time, we solved to be 
9.44, oh, sorry, not meters per second, just seconds. And that is equal to x. So from this, we can solve x is equal to 80.2 meters. And now we have everything that this question is asking for. So part A of this question asks, how far beyond the starting point will the automobile overtake the truck? The answer to part A is this, 80.2 meters past the starting point. And part B asks, how fast will the car be traveling at that instant? And the answer to that is 17 meters per second. So hopefully this was helpful to you. I'd love if you could share this with somebody if you think it might help them. And I will see you in the next video. So take care.